Hi class, it's Bill Berry here with an introduction to understanding entity relationship diagrams or enhanced entity relationship diagrams in this case. Since we'll be using these a lot during the course and they are extremely useful tools to people working with databases, we want to understand what they offer us, why they're so important, and why uh, perhaps I feel so naked if I don't have one and just have raw data and definitions to look at. So let's take a look at our topics for this video. First, we're going to look at the basic building blocks, which really are tables and the keys that you have for each table. If a diagram doesn't have at least that, then it's, it's pretty uh, underdeveloped. Additionally, though, we have some other column names that may be represented too, and it may also contain data types and different kinds of notations that might be specific to the tool that you're using, but often there's a little bit more explanation about column names. One of the things that is very important to have, in either in a text format or in a graphic format, is a way to describe the relationships. So we'll look at how one-to-many relationships are described and understand the little crow's foot notation that you're going to see so typically on these. Again, and other tools may have different ways to describe them. Sometimes there's an arrow and it will have a little piece of text next to it, but crow's foot notation is very typical. So let's take a look at that. Uh, and first let's take a peek at the basic building blocks. You must have at least one rectangle representing each table, and that's the entity here. So for that you always will have a name, so you'll notice that the table name is described at the top, and then you want to have at least the primary key and foreign keys present. Whether you have all the columns or not is just gravy, it's nice to have them perhaps, but at least you want to have these because the relationship is so dependent on this data. So you'll want to have that, and then if you have, like I say, other columns and perhaps other descriptors like the data type and the data size and things like that, then that's just gravy. Uh, furthermore, the relationships are described, as I mentioned before, and they typically use crow's foot notation. Now, it would be clever, perhaps, if the notation would actually draw between the two columns uh, that are related between the two tables, but typically they're not. Often they're just drawn at the middle of the, of the entity, so you don't have the visual sense of what's attached to what. So it takes a little bit more exploration, but the hint is, if you look at the primary keys and foreign keys, you will understand the relationship with too much trouble, they're going to be kind of clear. The notation that you want to look at here is the one notation on the side of any one from a one-to-many or even one-to-one -one relationship. You'll have the, uh, the line, a broken line usually, and then on the one side you'll see there's two little slashes that are perpendicular to that line, so that indicates a one relationship. Again, other diagram types might actually put the number one to, rem to note this, and they might use, instead of many, they might use a star or something like that, an asterisk. But typically in crow's foot notation, the many side is described this way, where you have a line, and then you have sort of a, a triangular crow's foot on the end, where you have some little lines that go off at an angle, and then you have this slash again here, and that's the many side. So let's look at a very basic one down here at the bottom. And the example is customers and orders. This is from one of our samples. We'll get into it more specifically later. But the sample here will show first we have customers and we have orders. These tables are related. You can tell so because there is a relationship line here. Uh, we can also see that there is a primary key in this way. We'll, again, we'll look at the icons, but the primary key is identified with a little tiny key icon. So customer ID is the primary key for the customers table and the order ID is the primary key for the orders table. Those are the only keys that are present so we know the key icons so we know that that is the primary keys. We also will note that if we look down this list, it's cut off but that doesn't matter because they aren't they aren't here. There are no other kinds of keys represented in the red notation. So there's no red icons here. So there are no foreign keys in the customer table, at least not that we can see here. But in the orders table, you can see that there's some other things going on. So we have a foreign key represented here. But we'll get into the details of that notation in just a second. The important thing to note here is, though, that customers and orders have a one-to-many relationship. That means one customer can place many orders but one order can only pertain to one customer. So it is not a many-to-many -many relationship, it is a one-to-many relationship, and we can tell that by the one notation here on the crow's foot and uh, the many notation on the other side with the, the little crow's foot uh, showing. So that's the basic building blocks that you want to have. 
Now, there are some very specific things to MySQL, and these icons may appear in other programs, but they may use slightly different ones, and that's okay. But here are some icons that you'll want to know about, and they will give you some additional clues. First of all, if you have key shapes, they almost look like exclamation points because their resolution isn't great, but they're little tiny keys. If you see a key-shaped icon next to a column definition, that means that that is a, a, the, a, either single or composite primary key for the table. So these two keys are used for primary keys. If you see anything red, <clears throat> that indicates a foreign key. If you see blue icons, so you don't see any keys and you don't see any red, those are just other attributes, those are not keys, just other properties or other columns that happen to be around. And then the other notation is <clears throat> there are sometimes filled icons and there are sometimes empty icons. Empty means it is allowed for that column to have null values and filled in icons indicated is not possible for those. They are marked as not null. You can also put these things together in interesting ways and I've asked you to do this in an exercise. For instance, why do we have a red key and why do we have a gold key? Well, think about that because that's just a combination of the descriptions that you see here in this uh, list. All right, so we're going to now look at some sample EERs and let's see if we can figure out some basic things about tables and relationships. Some of the samples that we'll look at come with MySQL. So remember that MySQL comes with the Sakila database and the World database. And then the author provides some additional samples. So we want to take a peek at some of those. We'll start with very simple ones and then go up a little bit. Well, note that all of these are included in the week one slide deck. So if you look at that, uh, that module, you'll see the week one deck. And if you want copies of any of these EERs, which you might not find other places, you can go and grab them out of there or open that document and you can see, uh, put those up on, on your screen so you can refer to them when you're working with them. All right, so first of all, let's look at the MySQL World Database. This comes with the MySQL samples. So here's some activities. First, let's find all the primary keys and foreign keys. So let's look for key-shaped things. I know this is a little small, but I think we can figure it out. You'll notice that we have the city table, and under that we have an ID. The column name is just ID, and that has the little key icon, so we know that's the primary key of the city table. In the country language table, we have two key-shaped things. We have country code and language, so that's an interesting thing. That means we have a composite primary key. It takes two columns to make up the primary key, and if you think about it a little bit, maybe you can figure out why. Remember, primary key has to be unique. So so uh, that's a little clue. In the country table, we have the code field, and that is marked with the, the key as well. So that's the primary key. It's just called code. Now, we can look and see if we can understand the relationships here. Are there one-to-one -one relationships? Well, that's going to be rare in our class. Are there one-to-many relationships? Yes. Country and city have a one-to-many relationship. One country can have many cities, but one city cannot be in many countries. That's a limitation, and that's what our model says. Uh, whether it matches reality is a separate question. Uh, that's something we can't answer. And we also have a one-to-many relationship here. One country can have many languages, many spoken languages that are associated with that country. We don't have any evidence of a many-to-many -many relationship, but we'll see that in another diagram, and then we'll have a chance to talk about it, how we would know that, because you don't see crow's foot on both sides indicating many-to-many, -many. so we'll come to that in a minute. Uh, so we understand that, and if we think about the tables, the, the fields that link the data in the tables, we can look at the foreign keys. So notice in city you have a country code, and in country we have the code field, we can know by the foreign key here and the primary key here that that is the fields, those are the fields that map that relationship. Country code in city maps to code in country. Likewise, country code in country language maps to code in country. Always look at the foreign keys and that will help you. Look at the many side, find the foreign key and that will map typically, often, often just one single field, to the primary key in country that describes the relationship. 
The other thing that we want to take note of before we start writing queries is we want to look at any naming quirks. So for instance, uh, this country code is not the same field name as code here. It was nice that they prepended the name of the table so we have a clue, but that's a quirk that we'll have to realize it's called code here and it's called country code here and that could trip us up when we're writing queries so we just want to pay attention. Also notice the author or the, the person who created this database did not prepend to all fields the name of the table which you may see in some places so that's just an interesting little note. Alright, so we've gleaned some good information out of that. Let's take a look at one more EER and see if we can do a similar exercise. This is the OM, Order Management Database, that came with your textbook samples. So let's take a look again. Where are the primary keys? Customers has a customer ID. That's the single primary key. We have items. Items has the item ID. Okay, that's the primary key there. Orders has the order ID. That's the primary key there. And order details has a composite primary key. There's two little key icons. One is order ID and one is item ID. Hmm, that's a little clue for us uh, that we'll explore in a minute. In terms of foreign keys, you'll see that customer ID is the foreign key into the customer's table. That's makes sense because we have a one-to-many relationship so in the many side we'd expect to see a foreign key and then here we have these two fields order ID is going to be the prime or the foreign key that maps into orders and item ID the foreign key that maps into items now one of the things that we see here that's a little bit different notice we have one-to-many 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 that makes sense but when you see this little kind of table here which joins in the middle which has a one-to-many on either side and it that table is the many on both that's a pretty good clue that this is a linking table and what really is happening here is we are describing a many-to-many -many relationship between orders and items but you can't express directly many to many so you always need this linking table how do we know it's a linking table well look at the fact that it has a composite primary key and both of those keys are also foreign keys that's a darn good clue also notice that often these tables are very small there's not a lot of extra columns here in fact sometimes it's just these two things so when you see a small table and it is the many on a two, two sides of relationships with other tables, you get a pretty good clue that that is a linking table and therefore this is a many, many relationship from orders to items expressed through a linking table as we see here. You need to stop and think about that because that's a little bit, uh, that's a little bit hard to understand at the beginning, but our eye will start getting used to that as we work through our databases. All right, in the last database, we'll uh, take just a quick look and see if we can identify anything else. Um, one thing that your eye should look at is the relationship. One terms to many vendors, one vendor to many invoices, one general ledger to many vendors, one general ledger account to many invoices. But again, look here and you see that we have this little table and it is the many it is on the many side of a rela of two tables, invoices and general ledger accounts. And if we look at its keys, we can kind of start getting the idea that this is a linking table, right? It links to invoices as a foreign key here, and the account number, it's a foreign key to general ledger. So this is a linking table expressing a one-to-many relationship between invoices and general ledger accounts. And it has some additional columns, but that's the relationship that it's trying to express. So I think you see here by looking at these samples that having an EER in front of you while you're working with a database can be a really, really useful tool. It expresses so much information, especially about the relationships that as you're doing queries, particularly joins between two tables, those relationships will be super easy to see on an entity relationship diagram and harder to see if you're actually looking at individual table and column definitions unless you have them all laid out and printed right in front of you. So I find the EERs to be super super useful in that case. Hopefully this gives you a good introduction to how these work, what kind of notation you're going to see, what are the key things that your eye needs to be able to pick up on these. Go and look at some of the other EERs that are provided in the week one deck and see if you can work through those. You'll have plenty of chances though because we'll be using all of these databases in our exercises and so when you start working on queries next week you're going to see them. Thanks for watching the video and let me know if you have any questions.